I cleaned the triple tail and the mahi. We're in the kitchen now. I got the triple tail fillets on this pan and in this glass pan, and we're gonna cook the mahi on the griddle. We got our onions and our garlic chopped up here. We're gonna put this in this dish right here. This I'm really excited for. It's gonna be similar to the Kobe dish we did in um, Louisiana. Pepper. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of fancy French salt. Don't ask me where I got it, because I don't know. My wife got it. Rosemary. Okay. Now, rip some lemon. Top this off, guys, with some parsley. Just to give it some more flavor. Put it in the oven. Check that in 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Done. All right, perfect. I'm gonna drizzle this in olive oil. Here's the secret right here, guys. You gotta put paprika on everything, so here we go. Boom, done. All right, now on this one, this was gonna be real special. So we are going to put soup potato on this one. That's gonna be the special thing, so here we go. Put some sweet potato on there. We're gonna just spread it on the fish. That looks phenomenal. Sweet potato on the fish is gonna be amazing. I think this one's ready to go. Let's put it in the oven. All right, put that on the top right there. Check that in 10 minutes. We got some other pieces of triple tail right here. These are some really nice pieces. My buddy Tom here, he's got a secret recipe and he's gonna cook these triple tail in the pan, fried. All right, we're gonna start with a little extra virgin olive oil here, because that's like the incredible ingredient to put it in a pan. We're just gonna put enough in here that we get a nice little coat on the bottom of the pan. All right, we have some triple tail here. We're gonna lightly season it with a little bit of cavenders. Main thing is just make sure it's sort of even on it. You don't have to pound it in there and you don't have to get it really thick. You just want it even so that as you eat through the fish, the flavor stays constant. Now we're gonna put a nice little coat of black pepper. Pepper, they say, is the master spice. Same thing, nice little even coat on both sides. While Tom's getting his ready, I'm gonna do our famous mahi dish here. This is gonna be really good. Put all this meat in there. Some lemon juice in there. Lemon feels great when you have a fresh cut on you. It's amazing. And then we're going to take our zesty Italian. There we go. So simple, guys. Salt, pepper, lemon, and zesty Italian. Now, this is sort of simple. There's no real breading on this, and there's absolutely zero uh, egg or anything involved in it. And what you're doing here, you're going to make it nice and light where you really taste the flavor of the fish. You can see it going. Don't be shy to get in there with it, move stuff around, and get that nice layer on there. Now, when you're cooking this, what you want to do is if you notice the edges, see how they're starting, you're starting to turn a little bit white. That's where you can tell where it's actually getting done. And what you want to do now, you see the difference in the thicknesses here. You have a thinner one, then you have a little bit thicker, thicker, and thicker. So this small piece, the thin piece, is going to be done long before the other three pieces that's uh, in the pan. Now, what I suggest doing is having two items to flip it with. One is to get under it and the other is to control it because what happens when your oil is hot and you flip it over, you'll splash it out of the pan, splash it on yourself and burn yourself. But this is just going to cook for a minute here. So as I said before, you just want to be sure that when you flip it over, and you notice it's not a lot of browning on it at all. It will if you have more to cook, it'll brown just a little bit or you can heat it up just a little bit. Always in anything you cook, especially when you're frying or if you're doing meats and things like that, anytime, especially with chickens or ham or, or fish, if you can get a little brown in it, that's where your flavor's at, is in the browning of it. So if you cook it and you don't have the brown on it, it won't have the exact same flavor as if you do it with a little bit of brown on it. Would you put triple tail in the top five? That's good, yeah, it is. And let me tell you what, they're an incredibly fighting fish. Oh my gosh. Have you ever seen them jump? Yeah, they're... Dude, I had one jump over a buoy, like he was just eight feet in the air, it's unreal. I've never seen one do that. Now, the amazing thing about triple tail is the fish, now when we were young, which Josh is a lot younger than I am, but we used to call them leaf fish because they float on the ocean like a leaf and it's hard to see the fish from a distance until you know what they look like. But they're an incredibly thick fish too. 
So when you catch them, you have a lot of meat for the size of the fish. So this one right here is ready, so we're gonna come over here. And you'll see this piece right here, we're gonna pull it it's brown, nice and brown. The main thing is, like I said, when you're doing this and rolling your fillets over, is you gotta control it, because if not, it will hurt you. And then we'll just take the heat off the pan off the heat. All right, here we go. I'm gonna try Tom's fried triple tail. Oh my gosh, dude. I gotta tell you, it's, it's an incredible fish. <laughs> wow. And the thing about it is, is you're not, you're not trying to hide any of your flavor with Oh my gosh. Yes, with any kind of a batter, and that's what I don't like about fish batters is I can, most eat, of the time I can do this all day. Thin. It is, very good. Jeez. Makes great sandwiches. You eat it just like this, whatever you want to do to what it. What the heck, it's so good. I'm gonna have the master chef Tom flip those things because he's so good at it. All right, let's flip this. One thing you gotta notice when you're cooking fish, whether it's fish or anything else, this end is a lot thicker than this end. Just like if you're going to cook a tenderloin steak, you have a thin end and a little, little uh, thick end. What happens when you cook it is, this will be your medium rare end and this will be your medium well end. So the main thing you do is, a lot of times if you're cooking on a stove like this, put your thicker end towards the center because this is hotter than this part right here. A, a pan will actually, as it heats up, especially a, uh, one of the uh, skillets, the old cast iron skillets, they get the same temperature all the way around. So this one right here, as you can see how it's wider in there, so when you flip it over, if you flip it over and put the side that is less done on the inside, it'll be a little bit warmer. It'll actually cook a little bit different and be more even as it gets through. As you can see right here, if I took this and just flipped it over, this would probably sling oil on my face and all over my shirt. Looks like we better get on top of that. Yeah, let's get this. Oh, Popping. Yeah. oh, that's done. That's done. Oh, it does not smell good. Yeah, it smells just like you pull a sweet potato out. But if you notice, you can't notice, it may be hard, but you can see how it has a brown edge and then you'll have a little bit of the lighter yep. sweet potato color underneath showing you that it has brown. We got sweet potato and crusted triple tail. We got pan seared dolphin or mahi. And we got baked Daddy. triple tail with onions. Those are our three recipes. Let's see which one tasted best. Here's the rules. We got three fish here. Yours was a wild card appetizer. It was fantastic. We have our pan, pan, uh, pan cooked. No, I'm sorry, pan seared mahi. We got our baked triple tail, and we got our encrusted triple tail. So Tom, I'll let you try the first one. How about you, how about you try the encrusted? Let me know how it tastes. Let's try the encrusted here. I always say bread. I like bread. You can have it without bread. Right. Okay. Mm. How's that taste? Mm, that's excellent. Is it excellent? Sweet potato. Dinner. What would you give that out of ten? Eight and a half, nine. Eight and a half, nine? Oh, you're, only, you're picky. Only because I've never had a 10. You never had a 10? <laughs> Not yet. Okay, all right. That's all right. good. All right, I'm gonna try it, here we go. Oh, that's really good, yeah. The interesting thing about that is you eat it. It's got, go long, it's got a long go fuse. It is, go ahead, honey, try that. Is it takes it about two or three seconds for that sweet potato to hit your palate. Yeah. And that's interesting, because it's like a little extra gift. All right, here you go, Kaylin. Wow, very good. Nice, right? What would you get that out of 10? Probably a nine. Nine, how about you? Yeah, Yeah. Good. Eight and a half, nine. All right, let me really try good. this again. Mm. The interesting thing about this is how that sweet potato hits you. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. You get the flavor of the fish, and all of a sudden there's this little sweet kick at the end. Yeah, it's nice. That's got a good flavor profile. That little cinnamon and, sh and sugar it topped it off. That's it. All right, I give that I give that a 9.2, 9.3, I think. She's talking about picky. That's good. All right, this is the one I'm really excited about. The onion, the triple tail. You got to eat it with the onion, though. That's the secret. Oh. Mm. Wow. That's really good. That's really good. Uh, that's, that's a 9.7. That is wow. amazing. Yeah, with the onion, that's the secret. That is amazing. It's like the, play, it's like the flavor of the onion brings it all together at the end mm -hmm. to, to top it off. Excellent. You can taste a little lemon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of flavor there. That's up there, nine, it's nine plus. Nine plus, I, right? I actually think that may be 
even better than the encrusted one. And the only thing I would might do the encrusted one is like get a little bit more brown on top. Yeah. Because it'd be crunchy. Yeah. But that is that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. That's fantastic. Now here's the question: Can the dolphin beat the triple tail? There we go. Tan seared dolphin. Mm, that's always good. It's always good. Wow. I think they're all pretty good in their own. Yeah. In their own right. The dolphin is good. The interesting thing about the dolphin is it goes back like when we seared the triple tail to start with, where that's pure fish flavor. Yeah. There's nothing mm -hmm. really add to it like the uh, sweet potatoes or the onions. So this is almost like Straight a fish. naked fish. If yeah. You, if you yeah. put it that way. And you can feel and taste the flavors coming out as it as it uh, as it hits your mouth. Absolutely. I'm gonna be fully honest. We did not film an intro at the end of this cooking. We got so preoccupied with our conversation, and then we were cleaning up, and we had the kids there, so it was just too much to handle. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We absolutely love eating that triple tails. I I don't know. I think triple tail is one of my favorite now. I I really like cobia, but I think triple tail it might edge cobia. I I don't know. I gotta put them side by side, but my gosh, they are both amazing. If you've never eaten a triple tail, go out there and catch one. You will absolutely love it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Make sure you guys go and check out Tide Line Boats. That was a boat we fished on and we caught all these fish. It's an unbelievable vessel. Probably my favorite boat for its size I've ever been on in my life, no joke. Their link is in the description. Check them out, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, and we'll see you next time.